Hello, good people of God. I trust you are all doing well. I want to use this opportunity to welcome you all to the message where daily we load Christian content for seasoned men of God. Hi, dear. We want to build a community and a family with you. So if you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then like this message for us because we want to build a family together. Do want to always comment in the comment section and share this message abroad. I want you to share on your WhatsApp status. I want you to share on YouTube for us, even on Instagram and all social media platforms. I'll see you again. Be blessed as you listen to this message. In receiving answers to prayers, there is a key I want to quickly give you and it is what we call the honor code. The honor code. I have arrived at a conclusion both by studies and observation that a lot of believers have challenges in their lives because of a lack of honor. A lack of honor for spiritual things. A good number of us have played with holy things. Things that are sacred to God. How many of you know that this service is sacred to God? This service is sacred to God because where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there. It's sacred to God in their midst. How many of you also know that the worship of God is sacred to God? Our worship of God. How many of you know that prayer is sacred to God? In fact, this teaching session right now is sacred to God. They are called holy things. Now, <clears throat> I'm speaking this specifically to power citizens. When you treat holy things with levity, you shall secure yourself from the blessing. When you treat holy things with levity, you shall secure yourself with holy, you know, from the blessing. What amazes me about honor is that in Christ, the fact that everybody that God will use in Christ, the things that God will ask you to be sacred about are things that are imperfect. The things that God will ask you, you know, to treat with, with sacredness, the things that God will ask you to treat with honor and respect are things that are imperfect. For example, our fellowship this morning is imperfect. This is not a perfect fellowship because it's a fellowship of imperfect people in an imperfect environment. Yet God wants you to treat it as sacred. The men that God will use in your life are imperfect people. And yet God expects you to treat them with honor and respect. Imperfect. Honor is not just about an action. It's something from the heart. Honor is something from the heart. And some people think knowledge can get away with dishonor. Knowledge can, cannot get away with dishonor. But there are some people who think because I have knowledge, I can operate and behave anyhow, and knowledge will bail me out. Well, in fact, dishonor can take away that knowledge. Dishonor can take away from you that knowledge. Look at how Jesus told them in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 11. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 11. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy. Who in it is worthy. Underline the word worthy. And there abide till you go thence. So if a man is not worthy, don't abide in his house. Next verse. And when you come into an house, salute it. Next verse. And if the house be worthy, take note of the word be worthy. If the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Next verse. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. That is take away your blessing that you brought. The blessing of the gospel, the blessing of ministry that you brought to those people because they didn't receive you with honor. They didn't treat you with honor. The blessing goes. So, the people remain unchanged. 
the people remain unchanged. Dishonor will never receive from God. Dishonor can never receive from God because we're dealing with receiving answers in prayer. Dishonor can never receive anything from God. If you're going to receive anything from God, you must be in a place of honor. You must be in a position of honor. He says, if they don't honor you, your blessings will return to you. So you find some people sitting in a church year in, year out, no spiritual growth, no vis visible impact of the blessing of God's word, nothing changes in their lives. And you wonder, are you really in that church with all this kind of word that is coming? They are in dishonor. Whenever you are in a ministry where the blessing of God is visibly showing on people's lives, people's quality of lives are improving and people's lives are really shining and you're the only one that nothing is changing about around you, do an honor check. Do an honor check. Because if you are in dishonor, even if you are living in my, in my, in my house with me, your life can change. Gehazi was one. Gehazi lived with a major prophet of the Old Testament. And Gehazi left his house with leprosy. Not because Gehazi was a bad person, but because Gehazi was in dishonor. Dishonor can never receive from God. And honor will always receive from God. Don't miss that. Honor will always receive from God. So, honor is very vital. Very, very vital. Because what you do not respect, you do not attract. What you do not respect, you do not attract. Your sense of value determines the virtue that you attract. Your sense of value determines the virtue that you attract. When you treat holy things as common and you treat secular things as sacred, something is fundamentally wrong with you. When you treat holy things as common and treat secular things as sacred, something is fundamentally wrong with you. Because holy things must be treated as sacred. You must live a life of honor. Honor is not just a teaching that you understand. Honor must become your lifestyle. You honor the brethren. You honor your man of God. You honor the fellowship of the saints. You honor one another. That is, that is how God wants us to live even in this world. People that will quickly fall into the trap of dishonor are people that God is using. Your friends, your kids, your children, your cousins. People see you often. And because they have seen your human side, you are not spiritual enough to understand that. When people see your human side, then they begin to dishonor you because they think that is all that is to you. It's not the human side of a man that was sent to you. It's the spiritual side. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. Not he that receives a prophet in the name of Abel Damina. But he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive the reward or the blessing of a prophet. The reward or the blessing of a prophet. You know, it's funny that everybody calls your sibling pastor. You're the only one that calls him his first name. Everybody calls him pastor. You, your own, you just call him Aban. Your husband is a pastor in church. Everybody in the church treats him with honor. It's only you, the wife, that doesn't regard him. You treat him anyhow. Your wife is a pastor in the church. Treated in that respect, with that regard, and the grace of God upon her life is blessing many. It's only you, the husband, that see her finish. You call her Ikaite. No respect. No decorum. 
you do not even recognize that that woman is a carrier of God's grace. A carrier of the blessing that can make your life better. You take spiritual things for granted. You play too much. Till you play, play into territories that you ought not to play into. You take things for granted. Familiarity has made you lose sensitivity. It has made you lose the consciousness of the environment where you are. You are treating the things that God treats honorably, dishonorably. When you honor, honor, honor will honor you. When you honor, honor, you must know where the honor of God is. You cannot, you cannot maltreat what God himself honors and have the blessing of God. I'm teaching good this morning. Please pay attention because we're talking about receiving in the place of prayer. If you're going to receive anything from God, you must be positioned in the place of honor. Honor will always receive from God. Don't forget, James says, let not that man think that he shall receive. Let him not think that he shall receive. So the issue is not with God giving. The issue with, is with a man receiving. And honor is very fundamental. Even in understanding the teaching of God's word. Honor is very fundamental. You miss your kingdom assignment. And you don't feel bad. You are given an appointment in church. Given an assignment. And you, you, you miss it and you are not feeling bad. Something is wrong with your honor system. Something is wrong with your honor system. You are treating the things of God with levity. And those things are so precious that Jesus died for them. Jesus died to give us ministry gifts. So ministry gifts are critical before God. Upon his resurrection, he gave gifts to men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers. It is from his resurrection. So it is what part of what Jesus died for. And when you treat the ministry gifts with levity, you are treating the death of Christ with levity. The church meetings came out of his resurrection. So it's important that we live a life of honor. Not just talk it, but live it as a lifestyle. In our ministry is a major cause for pastors. You know, and uh, we have a full teaching on, on the life of honor. If you, you've never been taught honor before, you've never understood honor before, I'll recommend for you to order for the full series on the life of honor. It's a complete teaching series that we specifically make available to ministry, people who are learning ministry from this ministry. And if you request for it after today's service, they will oblige you because I mentioned it. You can't last in ministry if you're not a person of honor. You cannot last. If you really want to last in ministry and you want to do ministry all your life, you must be a man and you must be a woman that understands honor, the value of honor, and are given to honor the things of God. Look at Mark chapter 6 from verse 1. Mark chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6. And he came out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. Next verse. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Next verse. Is not this the cup... First of all, they acknowledged the grace of God upon his life. Then they came into familiarity territory. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Dishonor will bring offense. They were off-ended at him. Now, take note, they were off-ended. Off-ended. In dishonor, you're off-ended. Dishonor cuts you from the supply of God's grace. Put that scripture back. I'm not yet through with it. Mm -mm. They were off-ended at him. Next verse. 
Next verse. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin. And you know, honey, one of the greatest tragedies that can befall any member of a family is to have the grace of God in his family and he is not seeing it. People are blessed by your man of God. You are the only one that has stayed in that local assembly. Nothing has changed. No growth. No visible quality of life improvement. You are just there. New people will encounter your man of God. Boom! And their lives have a direction. You are in the group of these people. It's not this. It's the carpenter. Sort of carpenter. And the next thing is offense. Because if you do not stay within the confines of honor, you will be offended. You will be offended. And nobody in offense can be blessed by a ministry. Nobody. Nobody. If your heart condition, once your heart, con because honor is of the heart, once your heart condition is wrong and you allow offense and you allow dishonor, familiarity, you can't be blessed by that ministry. A prophet is without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Next verse. And he could dare do no mighty works. Dishonor. Save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. He couldn't help them. He couldn't do much for them. In dishonor, you, it doesn't matter how you pray. If you like, pray more than praying hide. If you are in dishonor, you are only making noise. You are only making noise. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Though I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, and I have no love, I am a noise maker. All your 10 hours of prayer was just noise. Because you are not in honor. You are not living a life of honor. You are in offense. You are in dishonor. Familiarity has taken a better part of you. You are treating sacred things as secular. You have no regard for the things of the spirit. It's a very dangerous place to be. Because you will live with endless sorrows as though redemption has not happened. It's a very dangerous place to be. And like I said, you cannot last in ministry as long as you and dishonor have decided to partner together. Honor is critical. And honor is not lip service. Honor is not bowing down before somebody. Honor is a heart condition. Honor is from the heart. You can be bowing down and lying on the floor, but inside your heart, no honor. You're just a, an actor. You're just a comedian. You are a very classical comedian. Because you cannot deceive the grace of God. You cannot deceive the grace of God. And you cannot lure and lie to the grace of God. No, you cannot. You cannot. What you do not honor from the heart cannot come on you. What you do not honor from the heart, you can't get it. May you never be the inroad through which the devil brings dishonor to your ministry. I didn't hear a good amen. I'm teaching good this morning. You can't receive from God in dishonor. So, no matter how hard you pray, if you're in dishonor, you're making noise. You'll have to be in honor to receive anything from Jesus and to receive anything from the people that Jesus will send to your life. You have to be in honor. Even in the secular world, people you don't honor cannot bless you. Even in the secular world, people you don't respect cannot be of value to you. Even in the secular world, there's a level of respect and decorum you must express to, towards people that will take you serious. How much more in the things of the spirit? How much more in the things of God? You play with the things of God. You come to church late and you feel nice about it. That's dishonor. You are dishonoring our gathering. You are dishonoring our fellowship. And in dishonor, you can't receive. These are very important things. 
Because you can be in this church for 20 years without any visible change. You can be in this church and not understand what I'm teaching. You are writing notes that you don't understand because it will take the blessing to open your understanding. So you can be writing like a lecturer without understanding what you're writing. That's why they ask the guy, understandest thou what thou readest? Look at honor. How can I except some man should guide me? And then he begged him to come into his chariot and come and help him. That's honor. Honor will always receive from God. This honor never receives from God. I'm not saying God will not give. God will give, but you will lack the ability to receive it. This honor keeps you at a place of disadvantage. I'm teaching good this morning. If you're following, shout, I hear you. Yeah, this honor keeps you at a place of disadvantage. You must treat the things of God with so much respect. You must, treat the, the, you must treat the gifts of God. The people that God brings into your life, you must treat them with a lot of respect so you can receive from what God has put upon their lives. And I declare upon you this day, you will not be cheated of God's grace. I'm not hearing that amen at all. James chapter 1 verse 5 and 6 again. James chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. <clears throat> If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the giving God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toast. Let me quickly mention something. You know, when you are in honor, before I proceed, when you are in honor, when you are in honor, Everything that you honor looks correct. You only begin to, to notice faults when you start moving into familiarity. When you are in honor, everything looks correct. And because everything looks correct, you are blessed by everything. Because to the pure, all things are pure. Everything looks correct. You only begin to notice faults. The moment you move into familiarity territory, then you start noticing faults. You start noticing they didn't greet me well. You start noticing, I don't understand why his face was like that. You start noticing, I don't know why they treated me like that. When you are in honor, even if they give you a stool to sit by the kitchen, you are grateful. You feel privileged. But the moment you move into familiarity, you will say, why is it a stool? Why is it not a complete chair? Familiarity has come. And at that moment, you lose from get, getting the blessing. Jesus called a woman a dog. A dog. The woman said, yeah, Lord, I'm a dog. That's honor. She said, but even the dogs eat the crop. Because when you are in honor, you think correct. Honor makes you think correct. When you are in honor, you are thinking aligns with the thoughts of God. When you are in dishonor, you think carelessly. She says, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table of the master. And Jesus said, I've not seen faith. So Jesus called honor faith. Jesus called honor faith. And you receive in faith. So dishonor is unbelief. They could not enter because of unbelief. You can receive nothing from the Lord when you are in a place of dishonor. You don't take the things of God serious. We hope you've been blessed by this message. And as you've been blessed, we want you to bless others by sharing this message abroad. If you're new here, can you don't leave without hitting on that subscribe button for us. Hit on that notification bell. Like and then comment in the comment section. We'll see you again on the next one. Stay tuned.